Hello, and welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. In this example, we will demonstrate how to remove a pole from a structured domain. We're starting with a typical O mesh domain. It's termed an O mesh because of the O shaped grid lines running circumferentially around the domain. If we zoom into the middle of the mesh, we can see that the first row of hex cells all have a collapsed edge, shared at a common point referred to as a pole. Now some CFD solvers do not even support a pole condition and even the ones that do this can cause issues with the flow solution because the flow variables at the pole are simply average from the points around it. A better way to construct this grid is with an OH topology which we're going to demonstrate here. Now to construct the H mesh I'm first going to select the domain and I'm going to split it radially. And I'm going to try to pick a location where the cells are fairly square so my resulting H mesh will have similar cell spacing. I can then delete the inner domain with the pole, leaving this annular O mesh. Next, I'll select this domain, and I'm going to split this into four equal pieces by selecting the J lines. And then I can select the four inner connectors, and I can create an H mesh. Now you'll notice that uh, this domain has some poor mesh quality. One thing we can do to clean this up is to run the elliptic solver. So we'll select that domain. I'm going to go into the elliptic solver and I'll run a few iterations. And you'll see that this does help with the interior cells, but I still have some very high max included angles in the corners. In fact, if we select all the domains and we go to examine max included angle, we can see that we have some angles larger than 174 degrees. So to improve this, I'm going to go back, select all the domains, go back into the elliptic solver. This time I'll go to the Edge Attributes tab, and I'm going to change the boundary condition from fixed to floating. Now this won't affect any of the connectors on the exterior of the domain, but will allow the interior connectors to actually float with the solution. So I'll hit Apply, go to Solve, and I'm going to run this a few iterations. And you can see those connectors have moved in, and now my H mesh has some well-defined corners. So again, I can go back in and I can select all the domains. We can go to examine max included angle. And now we can see that our angles are under 125 degrees, so this is much improved. Now, if your structured solver does not support face matching boundary conditions between blocks, we can easily create an overset mesh with the same topology. I'm going to use the existing domains to create the connectors I need for the overlapping H mesh, but to avoid the large max included angles in the corners we saw with our first H mesh, I'm going to select these O mesh domains and go back into the elliptic solver. Go to the Edge Attributes tab. I'm going to set the boundary conditions back to fixed, and I'm going to select these connectors on the interior of the O mesh, and I'm going to change the boundary control functions to none, effectively turning off the orthogonality control. Hit apply, go to solve, run a few iterations. Now you can see that the angles have changed at these boundaries, giving us more of a defined corner for our H mesh. Now I'm going to go and select these domains and I'm going to split them at eye lines. I'm going to get two cells of overlap. And once I've done that, I can select those connectors and I'll show you a little trick. I'm going to hit Control C copy those and you can see in the messages window that I've copied four connectors. Now I'm going to go and undo my splits. I'm going to come back to the window and I'm going to hit Control V, paste those connectors I just copied. Now I can select those four connectors and I'm going to create a new H mesh. Now I can go in and select my original H mesh and delete it. Now I'm going to go back, select all of the domains, go back into the elliptic solver, go to edge attributes, uh, and make sure that my boundary control functions are set back to Steger Sorensen. I'm going to hit apply, go to solve, and run a few iterations to restore the smoothness and the orthogonality at the boundaries. And now we have a overset OH mesh topology. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop us a line down below or connect with us via LinkedIn which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.